Hey guys, in this video we're going to walk through some questions, some similar questions that you're going to see on the test and talk about the answers to those questions. Uh, I'm going to go through this pretty quick, so if you ever need to stop and rewind and watch a portion of this again, please do so. Make sure that you understand not only the question, but the, also the answer and then the reason behind that answer. Okay, so Peristalsis. Peristalsis is described as peristalsis is that wave-like action that occurs. So we have the esophagus here, which is that tube that connects your mouth to your stomach. And we have that piece of food going down the esophagus, and we have this wave-like action, the squeezing the food down to the stomach. So peristalsis is not an actual organ, it's a process. And it's the action of squeezing food the, the, through the esophagus down to the stomach. Which condition always indicates that a chemical change has taken place? Okay, remember that a chemical change is when something new is formed, so that's what we're looking here. When so we have something that is new, a new substance is formed, is the indicator of a chemical change. We do have our other indicators, such as uh, gases being given off, heat being given off, heat being absorbed. Um, a color change, light being produced, those are all indicators okay, of a chemical change, but they're not always present in every chemical change. But the one that is always present in a chemical change is when something new is formed. Explain what's happening in this diagram. Okay, so in this diagram, I have a piece of food. I have this long chain of this starch molecule, which would be like a piece of bread or a potato. Okay, so I've got this large piece of food, and as you can see that this long chain here starts to come apart right here. It starts to break down into these individual glucose or sugar molecules. And then it gets pushed or passed through the wall of the intestines and then eventually into the bloodstream. Okay, so basically what's happened is we're taking that large piece of food, we're breaking it down into individual molecules so they can pass through the intestine wall and get into the blood. This large piece up here would not make it through the wall of the intestines. It's too big, okay? It's like trying to put an elephant through a door. It's too big. You've got to make it smaller to get it into the blood. Physical digestion is accomplished primarily in the, and we're looking for an organ here, Primarily, the physical digestion is occurred in the mouth, okay, it occurs in the mouth. Teeth grind up food. Remember, physical digestion, physical change. I'm just taking an apple and turning it into apple sauce. Apple sauce. It's still an apple, but I've got to start to break it down and make it into smaller pieces so that I can swallow it and so chemical digestion can take place. So most physical digestion takes place in the mouth. Which element is present in all organic compounds? Okay, organic compounds, that would be the element carbon, okay, or carbon. All organic compounds contain carbon and come from living or once living things. Describe the digestive function of number three in the diagram below. Okay, so here I have a picture of the mouth. Here I've got number three and that is pointing to the tongue. The tongue is responsible for moving food around in the mouth, helping the teeth grind up and smash up that food. So it aids, helps out the teeth in the physical digestion process. Digestion is defined as the process whereby, okay, so we're looking for the, the definition of digestion. We are breaking down food, okay? So we're breaking down food. Just like that picture before, taking that large piece of food, that long chain of molecules, breaking it down into individual pieces so that it can be absorbed into the blood. What kind of change results from the breakdown of starch into glucose by your saliva? Okay, so starch into glucose, starch being that carbohydrate, potatoes, turning potatoes into glucose, which is sugar, that is chemical. Okay, I'm turning it into something new. I'm taking bread and turning it into sugar. That's a chemical change, turning it into something new. Which of the following com compounds contain the most elements? Got to be careful on this one. Most elements. I'm looking for elements here. Some of you guys will get locked into these little subscript numbers. Ignore those. Okay, that is um, talking about the number of atoms. We're not talking about the number of atoms. We're talking about the, the most elements. Okay, so look, let's look and see what we got here. 
we have a hydrogen, okay, a phosphorus, and oxygen, okay. So that has three. This one has one, two, and three. This one has one, two. Remember that CL, that L, that lowercase L goes with the capital letter. That's actually chlorine. And then here we have one, two, three, four. A sodium, a hydrogen, a carbon, and an oxygen. This last one has four. The others either have three or two. That's your answer. Which organ is responsible for most of the chemical digestion in the human body? Okay. Most of the chemical digestion occurs in the stomach. Okay. Most of the chemical digestion occurs in the stomach. Most of the physical digestion occurs in the mouth. Most of the chemical digestion occurs in the stomach. Which of the following compounds is organic? Okay, organic. Organic compounds contain the element carbon. Okay, here I have a carbon, a hydrogen, a carbon, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen. So this one obviously has carbon in it. This one right here, no carbon. This one right here, no carbon. This one right here, I do have a C, but that A goes with the C. That's actually calcium, so no carbon. Okay, as a student eats his meal, okay, the chart below is the stages of, uh, shows the stages of digestion. At which stages does digestion describe a chemical changes taking place? Okay, so the first one in the mouth, chew, chew, food is chewed up and broken down into smaller pieces. Apple to applesauce, that's physical change, not there. Food is passed to the stomach by peristalsis, that's physical, not there. Okay, food is broken down by the stomach into new, no, there's our key word, okay. So it does occur in the stomach, okay? Bile is released into the intestines to break down fat, usable forms of energy and product with storage, okay? Got it there, all right? And then also, we have large intestine where water is absorbed, so not there. So stomach and small intestines. Now, uh, keep in mind that, phys that uh, chemical digestion does occur in the mouth, it's just not explained in that particular one right there. It's not talking about it. When you move an object, chemical energy is converted into what kind of energy? Here we have chemical energy in the body. So we have chemical. Chemical is goes to, and we call this mechanical. Okay, or movement energy. What kind of change results from the breakdown of starch into glucose by saliva? I think we've seen this question before. Uh, we've got starch again turning to glucose that would be chemical because we have something that is new okay which type of carbohydrate will the body be able to absorb into the bloodstream most easily this goes back to the previous diagram that we saw we have a giant starch a huge starch molecule right here we got a little bit smaller sucrose molecule right here and then we have an individual sugar molecule which one's going to go into the blood the most easily? Okay, obviously that sugar one. It's the smallest. Okay, going back, you know, I can get you and I through the doorway. Can't get the elephant through the doorway. The elephant's too big. Got to make him smaller. What changes occur when the food is ground into smaller pieces by the teeth? Okay, you're taking a large piece of food, turning it into something smaller, and that is a physical change. That's a physical change. Which organ in the digestive system is not involved in the breakdown of large molecules into smaller ones? Okay, we actually have two here. We would have the esophagus. And then also we would have the large intestines. Okay, large intestines. See, esophagus is just transporting the food Okay, from the mouth to the stomach, using that action called peristalsis. And then the large intestines, we're not doing any type of breakdown of food. Um, we're just absorbing the water out of the food, okay, before it gets removed from the body. Carbohydrates are also called starches, okay, which is the best conclusion that can be drawn from the information in the diagram. Okay, so we have this diagram. And this is probably about the third time now that we've seen a diagram like this. Okay, we see these large molecules up here, large complex molecules up here. And then as they move downward, you can see that they get turned into individual molecules so that they can pass through this intestinal wall and then go into the blood. Okay, 
So we're saying that we have to take large molecules and turn them into small ones. Large ones can't go into the blood. They're too big. We've got to break down those large molecules and turn them into smaller ones so that they can go through the intestinal wall okay, and into the blood. Okay, the following foods were available on Johnny's dinner tape, j dinner plate. Excuse me. Which selection contains only organic compounds? Okay, organic compounds. We know that organic compounds contain carbon, so we know chicken comes from a living thing. Also, we have our carbon right here. We know that a potato comes from a living thing. We also have our carbon. A tomato, okay, tomato is a living thing. Also has carbon, okay. Butter, butter comes from milk. Milk comes from cows comes from a living thing. We have our carbon. Salt, look at this, no carbon. Okay, water, no carbon. So water and salt do not contain the element carbon. Okay, so which ones contain only organic compounds? It would be the chicken, potato, tomato, and butter. Okay. Which of the following compounds would most likely be classified as being organic? Okay, just saw a question similar to that. We're again looking for our carbon being organic. NaCl, no carbon. Here we have a carbon. Here we have a carbon. Here we have a carbon. Okay. Uh, so which of these following compounds would be most likely to be considered inorganic? Okay, I actually read that wrong. I apologize on that. Inorganic, it would be this one right here. There's no carbon. Remember that C goes along with that L chlorine. That is inorganic. So in this case, let me correct myself. In this case, we would have no carbon. Okay. I'm almost done here. What kind of energy is stored inside of food? Food is, we have inside of food and chemical. Chemical energy. Okay. And I spelled that wrong. That was a great job, Mr. Wilhelm. I'll erase that. And we'll put back here, energy. Thank you. So chemical energy is the energy stored inside of food. When your body moves, it converts chemical energy, we just talked about this, the energy in food, into mechanical energy. Now, since energy cannot be created nor destroyed, that's the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. What type of energy does it transfer to next? And that is thermal, okay? Thermal energy or heat, okay? Thermal energy or heat. So we take the chemical energy in food, it gives us the energy to move, which is mechanical energy, and then that movement is, that energy is transferred into thermal energy, which is our body heat, okay? And the law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. When the starch and pizza crust turns into sugar during digestion, what type of changes occurred? Okay, we've seen several questions like this. We have starch being turned into sugar. That is a chemical. We have something new. Okay, that is a chemical change. Something new is being formed. And that is it. All right. So. Make sure you go back and understand all these pieces. Make sure that you um, rewind, rewatch, do whatever you necessary that you can do really well on that test. Okay, and uh, study hard.